Hello and welcome to Lot Less Living. It's time for our update on the lichen dyeing that uh, I started to show you a few weeks ago. It's probably actually over a month now. Um, so if you remember at that point uh, I showed you some of the dried lichen um, and showed it was going to go into a soak and said I would check back in in a few weeks and let you know where we're at. So lichen. This is the staghorn lichen, the Ebenaria prunastri and this is the perlatum. They're in what I call the shake and bake stage at the moment. So we're in the kilner jars. They can stay in here for weeks and months at a time. The solution in them, my preferred solution, is a 50-50 ammonia and water mix. If you're not happy with that strength of ammonia, and it's household ammonia, not industrial ammonia, um, but if you're not happy with that strength, you can do a two to one mix. So you could do two cups of water to one cup of ammonia and just make it a little bit weaker. The main thing is that you've got this strong alkaline solution um, that fully immerses the dye, um, the lichen to produce the dye. And what happens is the lichen, when I put it in, these are two litre kilner jars. When I put it in, the lichen is dry, but it's crispy and I've not crushed it or kind of pulverized it at all it fills the jar and then I fill it with the ammonia and water solution and then it uh, rehydrates and uh, breaks down in that solution um, and as you can see I don't fill it all the way to the top because it's very important to oxygenize and shake up these dyes on a regular basis so every week what I do is open the top leave the top off overnight so it gets a good 8 to 12 hours of oxygen overnight and then reseal it and then every day at least once a day but preferably a couple of times a day we give it a good old shake and in between all of that it sits on the window ledge and gets nice and warm so that's why I call it shake and bake stage and you can see that what's happening here with the staghorn lichen it is a lovely deep red kind of wine color um, it's a beautiful color there it's a really strong dye that comes off this so we will talk more about that when we get into the actual dyeing stage and that is pretty close to me being happy with dyeing with it at the moment the perlatum over here I give that a quick shake um, it's coming up with a good colour and it will be a strong colour but that's not the best colour that you can get off it. That's probably because it's been tainted with birch bark as it's come off. Um, but I mean everything has its unique colour during natural dyeing and you've just got to kind of go with it. Um, you know the benefits that you get from, from lichen dyeing with the strength and the reliability of colour is sometimes kind of compromised with bits of bark coming off with it. Um, so a couple of other things to mention, um, you know, if I'm talking too quickly, if you're not able to take all of this in and you want to write stuff down, uh, there are some really good resources uh, when it comes to lichen dyeing because it's got a fantastic depth of historical knowledge. Um, this is a really, really good book. Um, and uh, when I was looking at this, I just found it uh, fantastic because it's got a wide range um, of lichens that have been included in it and it's been connected back to um, historically accurate data um, to say where the lichens have been used and what colors people have got from them and um, one of the things that's really interesting is uh, with everybody who dies particularly natural dyes we all kind of have our own ways of, of working and doing things depending on where we're based what kind of resources and equipment we've got you know everything varies slightly and we can pass on the broad instructions like the ratio of the ammonia to the water kind of mixture the size of jars but there'll be a little bit of a variation depending on your geography and your surroundings and when i was reading about the industrial processes that were historically used in the lichen dyeing um, and the lichen dyeing in scotland when that particularly took off one of the fascinating facts uh, that really touched me was that the factory in Glasgow which was developing this as an industrial uh, kind of complex for lichen dyeing used to employ Gaelic speaking workers um, so that when English people would come up and try to find out the secret of the lichen dyeing uh, the workers would be 
um, speaking amongst themselves and the visitors would not be able to understand them um, and the Gaelic language helped to keep those lichen dyings uh, a secret um, so that was quite a, an interesting thing to learn um, and there's always something for, for me to pick up. Um, the other two things that I thought I'd just recommend to you that are really handy for if you're going out and about just trying to forage, just trying to identify what's around you. Um, are these field guides that you can get? Uh, these are waterproof, wipe clean, so they'll last you if you're out in the rain. Um, the one that I've been using for the lichen is this lichens of Heath and Moorlands. Um, and this is just really fantastic. I'll be using this in the workshops that I'm running on natural dyeing so that people can have a look and see what we've got round and about us in the Loch Ness area because if you're coming from another area to do a workshop with me here um, the natural surroundings might be unfamiliar to you so we'll have some of these field guides available for you to just do a quick check and make sure that you're gathering the right thing but there's a whole load of these available for different types of habitats in the UK coastal areas, beachlands, mountains, oak woodlands, coniferous woodlands um, so if you buy the guide for your area go out and about identify what you've got and then refer back to the lichen dyeing source book you should be able to build up uh, an educated picture before you kind of start collecting from the fallen branches or do anything kind of too risky because lichen is a rare source so we want to use it um, as efficiently and correctly as possible with as little impact on the environment around us. So those are my tips and tricks on lichen dyeing at the moment. If you check back with me in another couple of weeks, I'll show you the results from the dye pot.